Hello and welcome to this Digi session in how to develop Qt applications using the Digi Connect Core System of Module solution. Qt is integrated and supported in all Digi Embedded Yocto releases, and Digi ensures that hardware acceleration will be used when available in all the Digi Connect Core System of Module. Today, I will show you how to configure the Qt Creator using the default Digi Embedded Yocto images to enable you to design, create, compile, and remotely debug your Qt application running in the Connect Core ATEM Nano. This is the hardware that I'm going to use in order to do this video. So this is the Connect Core ATEM Nano DBK and also the, the display. And we need to use the power supply connector, we need to use the console connector, and also we need to use the Ethernet port. And we need to use the LBDS connector for the display. To complete with the software setup, have a look to the bottom side of the Connect Core 18 Nano DBK, and you can see that S1 allows us to select the LBDS. So please ensure that the fourth switch is closed. So when you are looking at the at the board, your S1 should look like this. I will show you where to find the documentation which is covering the topics of today. So please go to Digi web page and under products and services, click on system of modules, then click on the Connect Core ATEM Nano, and from here, you clicking on the product support, we will have access to the documentation portal for the Connect Core ATEM Nano. Notice that all the, all the information and documentation related to the Connect Core ATEM Nano is uh, starting here. In our case, let's go to the Jocto section, and inside of the application development, there is a full chapter which is covering Qt and Qt Creator. So everything that I'm going to show you in this video, it's covered here. Additional to that, you need to visit this uh, Get Started and Program the Yocto firmware because you need to program the images which are provided by Digi. So you need to follow one of these uh, procedures in order to program them on the Connect Core ATEM Nano development kit. Let's start Qt Creator. So, using the Digi documentation portal, you can find out here a link to the Qt Creator server. So we can select the latest one, in this case 4.15, and in order to use the right version, we need to select for our Ubuntu machine the open source Linux for x86. So you, you should download it. In my case, I've already did it. So let's follow. It's likely that the file that you have downloaded does not have um, uh, execution permissions. So the first thing that we need to do is to provide them. So let's do it. Now we can see that the execution is allowed, so let's launch the installation script. Now, in order to install Qt Creator, you need to have a Qt account, so if you don't have it, please create one for you. And now Qt is uh, requesting our attention about the license, so please check with your legal department because this could be an issue for your application development. In my case, for this example, I'm enabled this tip, just confirming to Qt that I'm not uh, working for any company, but maybe this is not your case. So please check with your legal department. Now we are ready to install the Qt Creator. So we need to select which folder we would like to use. I'm going to, to select slash opt because 
I've already ensured that the Linux user that that I'm selected here is the owner of OPT in order to avoid further issues with the permissions. And again, Qt is requesting our attention for the license. So again, check with your legal department that everything is, is OK for you and your company. Once the installation is finished, we can just close and we can continue. Now we need to install the SDK that Qt Creator is going to use to create the Qt applications. So on the landing page for the Connect Core ATEM Nano, on the tab of Product Support, if you scroll down, there is a software section, which the first link is exactly that, the SDK. So please download it, and then we can continue. I've already did it, so it's here. So again, be sure that the, the file has uh, execution permissions, and then you can execute it. The first thing that the script is going to ask us is uh, the folder that we could like to install to. And again, remember, you need to have at least write permissions, and it will be even best if you are the owner of the folder that you are going to, to use, which is my case with a slash opt. So there is a, another confirmation, and once you click enter, the installation process will start. Now we can put the two pieces to work together. So the first thing that we need to do is to go into the folder where the Qt, Qt Creator has been installed. And here, under the bin folder, we will find out the script that will launch the Qt Creator. Here, there are two options. So if we just launch the Qt Creator script without anything else, uh, when we compile uh, our application, the, the Qt Creator will use the standard uh, Ubuntu SDK. So you will compile a binary for a 86 machine. Okay, But this is not our case. If we are interested in build applications, binaries, for our Connect Core ATEM Nano, we could like to use the SDK that we have just installed. In order to do that, we need to use the source command and point to one of the scripts that the SDK have installed, which is this one. So this guy will properly set up all the environment variables in the console that later on Qt Creator will use in order to understand where all the pieces of the cross compiler and the SDK are located. Before to launch the Qt Creator, I could like to tell you that if you have any error on the, on the console because something is missing, you might need to install uh, and another library. So let me let me show you which one. In my case, I've already installed it, so I don't know to do it. But maybe in your setup, you need to do it. At this point, we can just launch the Qt Creator, and we have it. The next thing that we need to do is to connect the Connect Core Item Nano with the Qt Creator. So in order to do that, the first thing that we need to do is to log in in our DGMBD Yocto image, which is running on the Connect Core ATEM Nano. And let's ask for the IP address that my DHCP server has provided to the board. So you can see here the IP address. So let's use it in the configuration for the Qt Creator. So tools, options, and under the devices section, we need to click on the add button. Let's select a generic Linux device and launch the wizard. So my recommendation is here to use as most descriptive name in order to avoid issues in the future. And now we can use here the IP address that we, we have taken from the, from the console and now the root user. Now 
you can create a, a new key pair. So just do it, click next, and now Qt Creator is, is going to try to connect. So let's see what's happened. So the rsync is not working, but for the topics that we are going to cover today, is enough, and you can see here that the, the connection was successful. We can configure now the kit. So the kit is uh, is a, an umbrella which will contain all the configuration that Qt Creator will need in order to develop for the Connect Core Item Nano in this case. So the first thing is to to add the the Qt version. So on on the SDK, just go to look for the QMake, click on Open, and you can see that it's properly detected. And let's put here the name, apply, and now we can do the configuration for the C and C++ compiler. So for the C compiler, let's select GCC and C compiler. My recommendation is to use a name which describes which compiler you are configuring. And on the binary folder, on the SDK, you need to look for the C compiler, which is this one. And you can see here that the configuration matches with the SDK that you have selected. Apply. And now let's do the same for the C++ compiler. So use the right name. And in this case, we can use G++. Now we need to select the right binary and again is detected properly so let's do the same for the debugger so let's use the name and select the binary for the debugger which is this one apply and now we are ready to set up the kit so click in add button again the name because otherwise later if you have several of them it could be a nightmare so the the device type as we selected before it will be a linux device as we only have the connect core item nano is the only one which appear here and we need to point into the sys root so if you browse into the SDK folder under the C root, you need to select the one which is um, defined for the ARM64 architecture. Now we need to select the right C compiler and the same for the C++ compiler. The debugger, we select the one that we have selected, select the Qt version that we have selected before. This is taken from the documentation and the CMake select also the one in the in the SDK. Once you finish, please click on apply and be sure to select the the Connect Core Item Nano kit as default in order to use it for all the projects that you will do. We are ready to create the Qt application. New project. By default, is already selected create a Qt widget application. Choose it. Provide a name like this one. The default values will, will work and just ensure that you have selected in the Qt selection the just created Connect Core Item Nano Kit. Okay, if here is still on gray, it could be solved if you restart Qt Creator. Once you finish, Qt Creator is cr generating all the skeleton for the application, and in order to avoid to type any any C++ code, we can double click on the main window UI, and from here we can use the Wisin alternative. If you select the, the desktop, the first thing that I would like to, to do 
is to ensure that we will cover all the display uh, area so it's always nice if you are aware about your display resolution to use it now I'm going to use uh, three widgets so one potentiometer like this so let's do it as big as possible a seven segment display like this and I will use also a taskbar like this once you have the widgets uh, placed in the in the desktop Qt Creator allows you also to edit the signals and slots and you can connect the different widgets and this dialog will tell you which functions are compatible so when we change the value on the dial I could like the display to show me the, the numbers and the same between the dial and the progress bar so as soon as I change I could like to see the numeric value on the on the progress bar it's a nice idea to save it and once we are here we can we are ready to compile so if you press the hammer and open the compilation console you can see that Qt creator is using the cross compiler that we have set up in the SDK the next step in order to deploy the application and, and, and watch it in our Connect Core Item Nano in the projects uh, section in the run or deploy we need to set up an additional variables we need to set up well and display and we need to say in which display we would like the application to be shown even if you only have one display we need to specify the platform and in our case we are going to use the Wayland and in order to make a remote debugging we need to specify also another variable We need to configure the board in order to use the LVDS port. So in the U-boot prompt, we need to set up a variable which is called overlays. I've already did it, but if you have a, a completely new board, you need to use the setemp command, then the name of the variable, which is overlays, and then the content which is this one and you need to save in flash because you boot is always working in RAM and now you can start the connected ATEM Nano Linux once the Linux has boot we can launch the application directly from the Qt Creator so if you click on the left button side you can see here on the application output console how Qt Creator is sending the application and I will show you how the uh, display is showing you the just created application on the display in your Connect Core ATEM Nano evaluation kit connected to the display you should see something similar to, to this so you can see how as soon as you change the value in the potentiometer the other two widgets follow the numeric numbers automatically okay and last I could like to point you that from the Qt Creator you can shut down the application so you have the full control from Qt Creator about what is happening on the target 
The last part of this session is uh, to show you how to make the remote debugging session. So in, in whatever file with C++ code, so you can set up a, a breakpoint, for example, here. And now on the left bottom side of the Qt Creator, you can see the, the button to start the debugging session. And now Qt Creator is connecting the the GDB server, which is running on the Connect Core Item Nano, which is where the application will be run, and the, the, the GDB, which is running here on your machine. And you can see that uh, the standard debug uh, screen appears. So you have the full access from here, and, and you can debug as normally in your, in your Qt applications. So that's all for today and see you in the next sessions.